Paul was a false Abraham. Paul was the ham who'd seen his father's nakedness and his son was cursed as a result of it and was made to be a servant of servants to his brethren. Now that is the story of Jesus in a nutshell. Paul, who is the false Abraham, the one who supposedly sacrificed his son and the one who supposedly proclaimed to be the father. You see, Abraham's name was changed from Abram to Abraham. Why? Because he was a picture of Paul, the man who supposedly sacrificed his son and proclaimed to be the father. There is a real Abraham and there is a false Abraham. And Paul is the false Abraham. Without knowing the story of Ham, you're not going to understand why Jesus said, I and my father is one. He that have seen me have seen the father. And finally, the most famous before Abraham was I am. This is all going into deep, dark parables, secrets about Paul. Now, let's deal with something. Now, Joshua, Joseph were all pictures of Christ. And as great as Joseph was, he was not the greatest. And as great as Joshua was, he was not the greatest. And finally, my brethren, as great as the prophet Esau was, he was not the greatest. Why? Because he was made to be a servant to his brethren. Jesus was not number one for a reason. God knew that in the near future, the people would make him an idol all over the world. People have made Jesus a God. And this right here, my brethren, is not so. Minus a few of us. And the few of us who know that Jesus is not God is mostly Muslim. We have the perfect balance of Joshua or Jesus. Now, let's go to Joshua the famous gospel of Joshua. This is like the Injil right here in our Bible. Your problem is you run and jump in the arms of John and you don't have the understanding to understand John. Here we have the Hebrew, Joshua. This is the gospel. And I'm going to show you something that Jesus is not number one and he was not number one for a reason. Right here in Joshua chapter one and one. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. It came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, Moses' assistant. Notice, this is a picture of Christ. How do we know? He's the son of Nun. He's the son of nobody. This is a picture of Jesus Christ right here in your Bible. Verse 2, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore rise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, now all of this right now is the area where the Arabs are. Even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. This is indicating that didn't no man kill the prophet Esau. Okay, he is still alive. The only person that is going to cause him to die is going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, notice this. It says, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Now, why is Joshua number two? Why didn't God say, as I was with Joshua, I will be with you, Moses. As I was with Jesus, I will be with you, Moses. No, Jesus or Joshua is number two. Why? Because the world made him number one. And God had to pump your brakes and show you right here in the gospel, in the true gospel, the gospel of Joshua. Right here we see that Joshua is number two and he keeps doing this. Watch this. Let's go to verse 17. According 
as we have hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto you. In other words, the people are saying, we will listen to you, Joshua, just like we listen to Moses. Moses was number one. Moses was number one. Joshua, where the name Jesus comes from, was not number one. Now, you got to let that sink in because the Westerners, the nation of Edom, I'm not ashamed to say it, white people have made a God out of Jesus right here in Christianity, courtesy of Paul. The nation of Edom is where we get 99% of Christianity's teaching. And this is hard for you to digest because they made Jesus God. They made him number one. But according to the Hebrew scriptures, God Almighty made Yahshua number two. He was a servant to Moses. He was Moses' minister. Okay, now let's keep going. Joshua 515. And this is going to be a quick glance, just a quick glance at it. There's so much more in all of these chapters, but we're just going to take a brief look at this real quick. Joshua 515. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Now think about it. These famous Christian debaters that are saying Jesus is, I am that I am. They saying Jesus is Yahweh. Moses was told by God Almighty to take the shoes off his feet. Now, listen to this. Joshua is told to take the shoes off of his feet. Okay, now think about this. Joshua was told to take the shoes off his feet just like Moses. So how in the hell is Joshua the great I am? How the hell is Joshua the great I am when he is told to take the shoes off of his feet when he's meeting up with an angel? Moses met up with God in a burning bush and he was told to take the shoes off his feet. And Jesus is being told right here. And it's safe to say Jesus because Joshua is really Jesus. Okay. In the types and shadow, he is a picture of Christ. Joshua, the son of Nun, is a picture of Jesus Christ. And he is told to take the shoes off of his feet. Okay? Now, that don't make sense if you're saying Jesus is the great I am. That's why I love the gospel of Joshua. The gospel of Joshua, I call it. I'm the one that call it this. Okay? The most overlooked gospel because Christians run to John and they ignore Moses and amazingly they ignore Joshua and Joshua is the Hebrew name of Jesus now let's keep going on this is going to be Joshua 6 26 and Joshua adjured them at that time saying curse be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city Jericho he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn and his youngest son, his younger brother. I'm going into Benjamin. OK, shall he set up the gates of it? Now, this is going into two beloved sons. You have the beloved Joseph, which is a picture of Christ. And you have the beloved Benjamin, who was greater than Joseph, which is a picture of Paul. Jesus was the foundation and Paul set up the gates, however. This is that father and son religion in Christianity. All those times Jesus was saying, Father, 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 he was speaking in a parable. He was speaking of Paul. Jesus, according to the Quran, was rescued from the judgment. Paul, however, was sentenced to burn in his own prison named after him, Bulas, which is Paul in the Arabic tongue. According to the Hades, Paul is in Hades burning. Man, he's burning like Bernie Madoff for this scam we call Christianity, man. That's right. He is burning. <laughs> Allah is no joke. Now, in Luke 16, Jesus gives us a parable about the rich man. Okay, this is going into Jericho because in Jericho, you can spell rich, okay? And he's talking about the poor man, which is Lazarus, which is a picture of of Christ, the poor man and the rich man, the father 
and the son. And the rich man was a picture of Paul because this is the first time in the Bible right here in Luke 16, besides the first saw where they talk about bringing someone back from the dead. Now, the first king saw he wanted to bring back Samuel from the dead, a dead prophet. And the second Saul wanted to bring back the prophet Esau from the dead. So the foundation would be Jesus and the youngest son would be Paul. Christianity is the curse of rebuilding Jericho. Write that down. I'm going to say it again. Christianity is the curse of rebuilding Jericho. We have a curse already announced on anyone trying to rebuild this religion we call Christianity. Now let's keep going. Joshua chapter 7, 10 and 11. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel have sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. You see, Joshua couldn't cover Achan's sin. You see, Jesus, his blood, OK, his sacrifice could not cover Achan's sin. In other words. Jesus couldn't die for Akon. He had to execute judgment upon Akon's sin. Joshua did not forgive him. You know why? It wasn't his place. The Christians make it Jesus' place to forgive the people when it is only God's place to forgive. And so, therefore, Jesus stoned Akon so that the fierce anger of God was turned away. Now, why? Because this is how God is. God is like this. The soul that sins dies. If you live right, you're going to live. If you live wrong, you're going to die. If you sin, you're going to die. Can't nobody change God's mind. That's God's way. Okay, it's never going to change. And Joshua, just because his name was Joshua, couldn't step up and cover Achan's sin. He had to stone him and everything that he owned and burn him. Why? Because he's a picture of Paul who stole the father's church now let's go on to joshua 10 and 26 and afterward joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees and they were hanging upon the trees until the evening according to the gospel of joshua <laughs> he didn't get hung on a tree <laughs> joshua hung five kings on a tree now that's that's amazing that is so different from the Jesus in the New Testament. Here we have Joshua. He's a killer. OK, he is executing God's judgment. OK, the Joshua in the book of Joshua probably would have been the Joshua to stone the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. OK, this is a Joshua that is executing judgment. And by the way, if you look up that story in John 8 of the woman caught in the act of adultery, it was added. It's not in the original manuscripts. Now, that's another topic going on. Let's go to Joshua 9, 15. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And Joshua called for them in verse 22. And he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have you beguiled us, saying, We are very far from you when you dwell among us. Now, Christians, y'all have to know the scriptures. I don't want to have to explain everything, but Joshua was deceived. OK, Moses wasn't deceived, but Joshua, he was deceived. Joshua was very limited on his revelation. However, Elijah was not. Elijah was a prophet that knew what was going on in the king's chambers. He had a more keen prophetic ministry than that of Joshua. Joshua wasn't really gifted in his prophetic insight as the other prophets. Now, notice Joshua was deceived earlier in the Bible when he was told that the children of Israel had sinned and God had to tell him to get off his face because Joshua was repenting, okay, and praying 
and he didn't realize that one of his own men had transgressed God's covenant. He was unaware of that. And right here, the Gibeonites, which is Palestine, they deceived Joshua and Joshua did not know. OK, because he didn't inquire of the Lord to find out if the Gibeonites were really neighbors. Instead, he trusted them and then he was deceived. Afterwards, he made them woodcutters and they were joined to the nation of Israel. But what happened? Saul came along and what did he do? He killed the Gibeonites. And then what happened? God's wrath fell upon Israel and there was a famine. And David inquired of the Lord and the Lord told him it is because of Saul. And get this. They had to hang seven of Saul's sons. Now that is going into the last day because seven is a number of perfection when the prophet Esau will die. OK, and that is going to cause all of the glory that you put on Jesus to go right back to the father. Seven of Saul's sons had to be hung in order to settle God's wrath. Now, it wasn't David's sons that had to be hung. No, it was Saul's sons that had to be hung. Wake up. Now, let's go to Joshua 10 and 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Oh, that's deep because Gibeon is Palestine and the Palestinians have made the sun stand still. Why? Because we tell you that Jesus is no God. OK, that is the perfect balance of Jesus. He's no God. We all are human beings. Everybody that ever existed. The only one who is God is God. Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? Oh, that's a book the Christians don't have. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. Now peep this. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a God. Nope. Unto a voice of a man. Joshua was a man. Jesus is a man of Nazareth. Acts 2.22. For the Lord fought for Israel. So this is awesome. We have a man by the name of Jesus. And he is the one making all his son worship stop. <clears throat> making all his son worship stop. Joshua will put an end to the son worship in the religion we call Christianity. His most fervent prayer is to destroy the cross. He does not like when we associate him with God. Jesus was like Samson, y'all. He was a blind servant. He was deceived by the Christian church called Delilah. And his eyes was put out from looking at what the Christian church has done to him by making him a God, lying about his death, so forth and so forth. Samson's last prayer was to destroy the Philistines just like Jesus' last prayer is to destroy the cross, which is Paul's church. Now, this is all true. Jesus is going to be the one who's going to put an end to the sun worship. Right when Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, causes him to die a natural death, okay? Jesus had a supernatural birth. In other words, everybody thought he was God. That's how he came. But then what's going to happen in the end? He's going to die a human being because God is going to cause him to die. And once he do that, God is going to be famous just like he was for killing the firstborn of Pharaoh, which really is going into killing the firstborn of Paul. This is a secret that's been hidden since the beginning. OK, Paul was the father. Paul was the false Abraham. Paul was the false Moses. Paul played all of the strong Bible characters and your church failed to bring this out. And since they hate Islam so much, why is it that Joshua's main goal and objective was to save the people of Palestine? Now, we talked about Gibeon. Gibeon 
is an important town of ancient Palestine located northwest of Jerusalem. Now, Jericho. Jericho is located in the Jordan River Valley in modern Palestine. At an elevation of 864 feet below sea level, Jericho is not only the oldest city on earth, but also the lowest city. So here we have Jericho. And here we have Gibeon, which is all places in Palestine today. Then we have Joshua saving Rahab. Inside Rahab, you can spell Arab. And he told us the gospel is to go spell. That's what I'm getting out of it. Because all these coincidences are adding up to logic. Okay? All this stuff right here is proving my point. That Jesus is the Messiah. Of the Muslims and the Muslims only. Now we're going to close with Al Imram 4 157 through 159. And for boasting, we killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they neither killed nor crucified him. It was only made to appear so. Even those who argue for this crucifixion are in doubt. They have no knowledge whatsoever. Only making assumptions. They certainly did not kill him. Rather, Allah raised him up to himself. And Allah is almighty, all wise. Every one of the people of the book will definitely believe in him before his death. The Christians are believing in Christ prematurely. That's all that's going into. And on the day of judgment... Jesus will be a witness against them because God is going to make Jesus destroy the Christian church just like God made Joshua destroy Akon and everything he had. Christianity is a religious scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. It is nothing but a false religion from a con artist by the name of Akon. Mr. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. Your boy Paul, the prisoner of the Lord. He is the wolf in sheep clothing that Jesus warned about. Learn the truth by opening up the gospel of Joshua and reading through it. That way you can understand John. If you don't understand the Hebrew scriptures, you're not going to be able to understand John and all of the parables. And mind you, every time Jesus spoke, it was in a parable. He was uttering a secret that was hidden from the foundations of the world. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.